Hi, I'm Andre, and some months ago I've knitted a hat out of yarn and uh, it took a really long time, four or five hours, and in the process of looking for a tutorial I found some people using this circular knitting machine to do them really fast. Well, now looking into those, they look really cool and mechanical with lots of things going on and like a little crank that you uh, go round and round with. So when I look for those online, the old school ones which are really cool and metal, they're like a thousand dollars. So there's surprisingly very little information about these machines online. So I thought I'd try to make my own and maybe learn something in the process. Looking at videos and images of these machines, I started by setting the half pitch distance between two needles. Made a hole for the needle and also two prongs and a hole down section. And then some fillets to make it all neat. Started the needle with this section to fit in the hole, as well as a few different features that looked important. And then I looked at the design from various angles to make sure it made sense. Okay, so I've got my uh, first few parts, needles and things. Okay, so just trying to create a little uh, setup here to be able to test these. And I can already see the first problem. <laughs> Two problems actually. Okay, so the first problem is that this gap is too small for this needle. This, ne this needle has to be able to pull this all the way down, kind of like that, but at the moment it gets, uh, gets jammed there because of the thickness of the line itself. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is this curve here is uh, starting too far on the edge. It needs to be further back because when this pulls it down, this is supposed to slide along there and down. Overall, it could do with having a bit more space everywhere, so I think I'll make the whole, th the whole thing a bit bigger. The second prototype to the first one. It's a little bit bigger. These are a little bit different as well. So they're a little bit bigger and the curve on these is a little bit different. So these new needles are a little bit different as well. They're larger but also the actual nose and various profiles like uh, that corner there compared to this one and this length here that make that does different jobs so um, they kind of have to be a bit different, and I'll show you. So I think through designing this second version and actually uh, working through with a prototype, I think I finally uh, realized how this thing actually works. The way I usually think about knitting is that it's just putting a loop through another loop. So you make a loop and then you pull a loop through that and then put, pull a loop through that. So that in essence I think is what knitting is. It's just pulling a loop through another loop through another loop. And either if you do it with needles or if you do it with a machine like this, that's basically what you're just trying to do. Grabbing a loop and putting it through another one. I'm just gonna show with one needle for now so it's a little bit easier to understand hopefully. So there seems to be four stages to the work that this needle has to do. Pull down, belly push into the prongs, then it gets under the yarn and then it releases it.
Let me show that again. So we, if we want to use this linear thing to simulate a circular one that goes round and round, we would have to thread it on first and then we do one round where it goes up and then pushes it forward. So at this point, when the needle is up, a new piece of line would be presented to it, just like that, and then it would do the same thing that it did to the first one, but they're at a sink where it would end up pushes the first one to the back and now the second one is where the first one is or was and again if if you get an yet another piece of line same thing happens again where your knitting just grows more and more and more on this side so this is how these things work as far as i can understand and the main, and this one works fairly okay. And the main problem that I have is that these things are, are really fragile and they're always breaking because of how it's printed. So um, I'm gonna start on the next version, version three. Hopefully it will already be circular instead of a straight line. And I'll make these bigger to see if I can make them stronger. If, if they still break off, then I'm gonna make them basically like these where I make holes in the base and then print these little lugs horizontally so they're stronger and then I'll just put them in here as pins. So because version 3 is now round it's quite a big piece just that base plate so I printed a small section of it just to test it out in case some things are wrong and let me show you the changes. These, uh, these hole downs are pretty much the same, they're the same profile and everything but it's just narrower because it doesn't need to be that thick and also now that we're going around, um, all the parts that do different jobs are competing for space. So it's good to make these things as small as they can be. And the other thing is the needles. Uh, first thing is, this is the old needle. The new needle is thinner so that there's more free space. The profile is very similar, but there's this little kicker here that I'll explain in a minute. And there's a guide or a hook in the bottom so that it can ride up and down. And the carriage itself is very similar to what it was. And these lugs are thicker than what, we, what they were before, but obviously not thick enough because uh, this one here is broke already. So I'm gonna have to redesign that so that these are inserts like these things. Okay, so I've had quite a few iterations to refine the design. Uh, this part didn't really change from the last time you saw it, so it kind of stayed the same on all of these, uh, but it moved back, I think it was on this one, it moved back a bit. Uh, these were replaced by these guys, which are now printed as a separate part, really simple part that just goes into the hole. Um, they were the right length and the right shape, but they were a bit too small. So on, on this version, they're now uh, quite snug. Uh, and this version, they didn't change. Um, the hole for the needle has changed a little bit, uh, both in size, mostly small tolerances um, across here and in length as well. Um, and the needle... I think was the component that had the most changes. From this one to this one, I think it was mostly the profile of the what I call the kicker here. Uh, and then I ended up having to change that again because the line would get stuck here on the stage two, on the upward stroke. So that's changed a bit and then that kind of worked and I had to make it a little bit longer from here to here. And then it went longer still from here to here. Um, but then when I made this fatter as well, that dimension increased from this one to this one, this slope here was no longer acceptable for stage three. So I had to make this whole thing longer again and that angle now resembles more what it used to be. Uh, this kicker again has been a little bit improved and the rail follower here on the bottom is enlarged.
Okay, so I've done the first print of the biggest parts and this one had a little problem, it's a bit warped, but uh, I'm gonna see if I can make that work. Um, and I don't have all the parts to put it together fully yet, but I thought it might be a good idea to test it out, see how it's working so far, so that if there's any changes I'm not gonna have to print everything again. So on this one it's quite interesting how the support material came straight off the straight off the piece. Quite cool. You left a bit of a rough finish, but uh, that's not important because all the important surfaces is on this side where the needles actually ride. And the way this works is on the remaining part, and these two kind of go together like this, um, it's uh, this bottom piece is a track. So these needles these needles will ride on this groove and they'll be flat. And when they get to this hump or this mountain, they have to ride all the way up and then all the way down again. So this is quite a critical part. And the main thing that I was worried about is that from the bottom level to the top there's quite a lot of lift that needs to happen in a bit of a short space, which means that this angle is quite steep. I try to widen it as much as possible, but just because the um, circumference of the knitting machine is quite small, this is as worse as it can be really. Um, but anyway, let's put it together and see if it works. Seems to go up and down fairly well. There is a bit of friction there and gets clunky sometimes, but for 3D printed parts it's not bad and with some lubrication it get better. So I'm gonna print the remaining parts, assemble it all together and hopefully be able to do my first test knit. Uh, and because 3D parts take so long, I've added these three lugs here so that I can actually make some kind of a base for it to keep it off the table. That doesn't take forever to print, so I'll probably do that in the workshop. Okay, this thing is all together. I just need some yarn and I can try it for the first time. Uh, I'm quite excited, but also realistic where this is probably not gonna work, but it's, it's the first attempt. Okay, first try, here we go. I've seen, uh, I've seen people cast on videos online and they go one in, one out. having problems here. 
the the line isn't going onto the green lugs on the second time around. I'm gonna see if I can help it a little bit. So is this this part here. When this needle starts to rise, like there, this line this bit is supposed to slide off the belly. But what's happening is that it's getting stuck there and not going there. The whole mechanism is getting really stiff as well. I heard some people say that uh, some machines will run a bit um, better or worse depending on tension. So the tension is definitely a factor. I'm just not sure what to go for at the moment. getting really stiff, it feels like it's going to break. Definitely sounds wrong. The other thing that I'm thinking is that this yarn might be quite large and grippy. So I've heard other people say as well that um, the yarn seems to have quite a bit of influence on it. All these little fibers, not very neat. And it's quite, um, it's quite grippy. Okay, so I can see already quite a few things wrong with it. Um, first of all is the size. Uh, the smaller you make these, the harder it is because of how the angles work out of how the line get, needs to be pulled. The reason I made it this size is because it's the biggest size I can fit in my printer. I need a bigger printer now. But I've already spent two weeks researching, designing, prototyping. So I think I'll give it another go with a different yarn, maybe different size and different... Um, something a bit slicker that doesn't catch as much. And we'll see it, how it works. If that doesn't work, I'll probably revisit this project at some point. So I went and got some uh, different yarn to what I was using and these are kind of like different thicknesses in type so I'll show you the difference. So this is the one I was using before, it's the thickest one of all. Then I got this one which is a lot thinner but still a bit grippy. And then I got this one which is probably a little bit thinner still and not as grippy, this is probably the slickest one. So this one doesn't work. This one I've already tried and pretty much happens the same thing as this one. So I'm, I'm having some hopes for this one. We'll see what happens. So it seems to be better, but it's not putting, it's not putting the line on the prong straight away. And usually the Tension builds after the first few. Hmm. Now I'm feeling like I'm getting all the strain on the carriage and the needles again because things are starting to get really tight. Still doesn't work. It's getting it's getting stuck on that same place again. This this step here is where it happens. That's under a lot of strain there. This should just should just fall into there. It's not doing it. No, nope. doesn't work. It's just eventually jams. This is a uh, this is really frustrating. I think I understand why it's jamming and why it's not working properly, and I kind of know what I need to do to fix it, but it's a lot of work. Uh, a lot of hours designing and potentially a lot of hours printing all this again. I'm going to try one last attempt at just redesigning the needles and trying to get around some of the issues to see if that will work. And if that doesn't work, I'll probably leave it at that. So I have half the needles are the new design, the orange ones, and the other half, the gray ones, are the old design. So I tried to improve this design in order for this kicker to work better. 
the hole for the yarn is smaller because that it didn't need to be that big. That gave me a bit of space here. This whole wall is closer together. The nose is steeper. This bit here is steeper as well. And I've took a big chunk of material out of here so that the angle at which the yarn is pulled is a little bit better for getting it over this kicker. Um, Ideally, I would make it longer as well and change many other things, but that would mean having to reprint all the big parts. So I've tried this again and these new needles do improve, but still it doesn't knit in a way that is reliable enough to use this as an eating, a knitting machine. So before I throw the towel in, I'll just show you what I've learned from this. So this guy here is just coming to the position at which it should kick the yarn onto the prongs. And you can see that it almost does it. I'll get a better angle. It's almost there, almost, but not quite. So literally with, with just a little tap, it would fall into place. And same thing, this would be the, this would be the next one. Sometimes it does it. Also depends on the tension, but just a little tap would would have done it. So we're close. So I've managed to almost get it working and it's really frustrating that I don't have enough time to properly finish it. Cause you know, it might be still another week or two weeks, even though, especially when you start reprinting all of these big parts, it might still take a long time, but I, uh, I'm confident that I understand what's going on and what needs to happen for it to work. So it's very close. Anyway, the video is long enough as it is. Uh, hopefully you found it interesting working through all these problems, even though we got so close. I think I won't give up on the project just yet. I'll probably pick it up in the future because I have a few ideas uh, that might make it this an even more interesting machine, but again, needs a lot more time putting into it, which I don't have right now. So I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. They make this kind of stuff possible. Um, I'm just hitting pause on this. I will come back to it. I'll potentially make it better. Um, and yeah, if you like this sort of stuff, figuring stuff out from scratch, then go and check out my Patreon page. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you very soon with more videos with all kinds of subjects. Bye.